Hi, I'm Lee Cherry. We're here in New York City at Shoot Digital, and we're gonna do a shoot with Resource Television, AKA ReTV, and we're gonna do a technique segment on how to shoot movement. Okay, well, I started photography originally, uh, I was a dancer, and I was touring around the world, and I had nothing but time, and I got a camera, and I was shooting all the beautiful places that I was at. I was in Europe, all over the place, and uh, all over America, Hawaii, and I started taking scenics. And while I was there, I was also in a cast full of dancers, and people were like, hey, you wanna shoot me, you wanna shoot me, you wanna shoot me? So I did. When I came to LA, I decided that instead of having to wait tables or something while I was auditioning, that I can take pictures, I can do people's headshots and stuff like that. And uh, eventually people started knowing me as Lee Cherry the photographer. And uh, I kind of fell into photography and as every door opened, I walked through it and committed to it. So everything I needed to learn, I would just learn it. Well, you know, I actually avoided shooting dance at first uh, because I didn't want to be looped into a category I shot, I uh, focused on portraiture a lot, and I would shoot dancers, but I wouldn't shoot them dancing. My first big commercial job was probably shooting the Pussycat Dolls, who of course are dance influenced. And um, speaking the language of dance is something that I do naturally, and dancers trust me that I'm gonna make sure that their aesthetic is correct. A photographer that hasn't shot dance, um, it's really important to press the button when you want it pressed and I'd say to count them off. Eventually you can develop a technique to where you can just say one, two, three, go, and you just do it and you know how to do it. But the best thing to do is, you know, dancers dance to music 99% of the time. So it helps to create the counts. Dancers count, you know, five, six, seven, eight, jump. So everybody's on the same page as far as what happens. I also recommend um, shooting low. So the dancer doesn't have a lot of pressure to jump high and you can focus more on, uh, on the aesthetic then how high can you get, so to speak? Number one, the dancer is used to playing out to the audience, but when you're shooting low, your audience is actually lower. So dancers sometimes have to go uncharacteristically low with their focus, um, but it doesn't look that way. What separates, to me, a good dance shot from a great dance shot is the face. It's actually all about the face. If you see any effort at all, then the fourth wall is broken. And a lot of times in uh, real life, when a dancer is dancing, there's effort there and it works because it's high energy. But in a photograph, in a still motion, in a still photograph, you want complete relaxation, like you're not dancing. As often as possible, I try to communicate non-verbally. For example, if I want someone to smile, I don't ask them to smile, I smile at them and they smile back and I press the button and that's that, you know? When I'm doing uh, dance, I'll explain to them and if I'll show them the two photos because a lot of times, sometimes the best dancers in the world will sometimes, it takes them a couple times to get it as far as in the camera because the big difference is dancers move through time. A camera freezes time. Well, to avoid the blur, I actually just don't, I don't shoot at a crazy high shutter speed. I'll shoot at 1 25th, 200th, nothing, um, nothing too crazy. I just don't have the move in a way that uh, creates a lot of blur. Like there won't be a lot of like boom, you know, I'll have the shot just go straight to there. And the thing is like the dancers, uh, they float. I'm not super strict on my rules. I mean, the only rules that I really have is awesomeness. That's pretty much it. So <laughs> as long as it looks awesome and that you get a great feeling from the picture, then you know, rules are created as a structure. Rules are created for people who don't know what to do. On the technical end, today I'm focusing on the dancer and the fashion. And I'm not doing anything too fancy with lighting. I'm really just keeping it beautiful and iconic and classic. So I'm just using a big light up front right here and I'm using some strips for some subtle edge, it's nothing too much. And then I'm using the spot just to give a little depth. And I want the, uh, the look to be just very classic so that you can really focus on the dancer and you can focus on the clothes and the hair and the makeup and to really marry those two. Um, yeah, I have several other projects going on. Um, just being a photographer, I've shot so many different kinds of talent 
that uh, what started out as an after hours in my photo studio in LA has evolved into a show called The Zodiac Show. And it's a multi-genre, multi-discipline variety show with a 10-piece band, rotating singers, aerialists, fire, and it's just an amazing project to really utilize all the skills that I've accumulated uh, throughout my life. My other project, my most recent project, uh, is Labor of Love. When my wife uh, got pregnant, um, we decided that we wanted to make a record. And so we, um, we went to Kickstarter and we tried to raise about 6,500 bucks to get it started, you know? And we ended up raising over $42,000 for this record. And it is a fully produced, it sounds like a major label record and it's on iTunes right now that you can get it. And um, it's got 12 songs that are all radio friendly songs but the subject matter is all about the journey of motherhood and what that means. And it's a really beautiful project that I'm so proud of and everyone watching and listening needs to go out and buy Labor of Love.